Hmm, no. Not. Hmm, oh, rat food. Milady says bleh. Wrong game. Ugh, come on. Ah! Ah! <laughs> yes! I matter now! That's the overheating! I'm a genius! Precisely zero seconds in a lab and 25 years behind a glowy game screen qualifies you as a bean of science, I do decree. Tidy up my innovatively colorful lab coat. I have reinvented the heart of science. Thanks to my brilliance, it's now possible to be predictable and unpredictable at once. Test right. Put my trophy here, sir. I hunger for gold. Seems all of you have struck gold yourself. You all like your Fuffles minion talking about TF2 almost as much as your wet water, but a retrospective? Huh, <laughs> rug pool? My channel's partially defined by Valve's greatest creation, almost always in countdown form. But now that my feet are wet in the lake of review, why not? Gotta get your man co patented content somehow, and I kinda wanna wait for a new major update to refresh both of my weapon lists. Don't we all? I rarely appreciate the nuts and bolts effect, but today we apply it to my third favorite of all time to study the masterpiece I'll never tire of studying. <clears throat> Gentlemen, let us video. Okay, honestly, if you know my reviews, it all starts with the story breakdown. And who? No, really, who ever talks about TF2's story? It never really occurred to me how deep under the radar such an elementary element generally is for a game with this much cult and clout. Kinda makes sense that a happy, amused kid would only focus on the stiff on stage telling him jokes and not the how and why of his ways. But the man's deeper than you think, champ. Story time! Enter Zephaniah Mann, a super rich some bitch of 19th century England. Year 22 of the 1800s gifted him a trio of flesh and blood, brothers Redman and Blutark, born as nature intended, and Valve's own Stewie Griffin, Grey. Popping out with a full vocabulary. Zephy nearly had him smothered. Why the actual fuck was that ever normalized? But a stray eagle ex machinas on full charge, abducting the demon baby and actually raises him, only to be eaten by him as soon as he could kill. What? 28 years after the birth of his sons, Zephaniah bought an imperial fuck ton of US land in hopes to expand their munitions brand, Manco. Except. Oops! It's all gravel pits and dust bowls. And the traveling he made to acquire all that shitty land got Zephy mortally sick. And stated in his will, the two infamously competitive brothers would have to split all that. Daddy's dead. Long live brotherly bitching. And literally, the next 120 years is all about them fighting over the inherited land, hiring whatever bloodthirsty idiots dumb or crazy enough to indulge. The eternal matchup of red versus blue is born. So about me saying this stuff's actually deeper than you think, I lied. It's just a pissing contest. TF2's story is driven by hilariously unstable ubers, and the whole conflict is one big joke delivered masterfully. True, there's a lot of fun details like Redman and Blutark hiring three different generations of engineers to help extend their life just to outlive the other, Grey Man doing the same to destroy both of them with his own Grey team, aka the robots, and how the current mercs are technically the third of their kind, with the firsts being shit like Sigmund Freud as medic, Fu Man fucking Chu as spy, and Abraham goddamn Lincoln as pyro? Honest Abe my ass! Up top, Mr. Five Bucks! Especially coming off the Terraria review, this story is utterly ridiculous and stupid. But likewise, you come to appreciate it. We never needed a reason to dock the gene pool's market value and kill each other with hats and pickaxes stained with AIDS. But hey, 
Turns out we're all bitchy brothers with purpose. Mazel tov. There are more praises to give a 13 year old still relevant game than there are land masses under the man family's ownership, but I'll start my digging on the surface. Team Fortress 2 manages something only truly great games can, looking great without looking great. Even on release in 2007, it never was tip of the hats in graphical tech. Hell, some things have a bit of block if you look hard enough, but the ancient trick of perfecting everything the robots can't, something Valve especially doesn't really practice, turned this unassuming misfit into their leading artist. TF2's visual stylization is among the most legendary in all gaming, for its godly grasp on aesthetics in an industry where almost Everyone goes for the machine's throat, even back then, showcased the true value of passion over power to the PC market. A crowd with a notorious fidelity fetish in the same way Nintendo did for consoles two decades prior. The bravery, man. I like to think that TF2's a big reason why we're so much comfier about this sort of thing now. How you don't need power to be powerful, even at the highest profile table. Imagine how important that message was for indie developers to hear. I could be wrong, but I could also be right. Nevertheless, it's amazing how well this game stands up visually. Not that it's technically unimpressive, but fantastic colors, charming character modeling, and intermixed with particles and effects making for game flow that's somehow both low-key and extravagant. I can't get enough. It looked nice 13 years ago, it looks nice now, and it's gonna look nice in 50 years. Because good art always does. My hat's off to yo right! The hats! How dare I forget. It's pretty funny how this was the big takeaway for the vast majority, but I can't deny all the good this simple addition led to. And since they do affect the general aesthetics in a big way, I got a bite. Consider me a fan. Character customization is a huge plus for many, as it keeps things from looking exactly the same every time. So okay, TF2, what are our options? One and a half thousand, good sir. Woohoo, this shit's like Jimmy Neutron's god candy. Every flavor. Goofy. Classy. Cringy. Badass. Plain. Elegant. Try hard. Macho. Edgelord. Spooky. Yard pirate. Ninja. Sight. Robot. Interstellar. Jojo! Tastefully racist. Very smelly. Oh god! What fuck? Why boner? Gay Ben? Trans Pride! Cowboy! Yeehaw! Fruit! Fruit! Can we pause? Holy shit! Oh, there's also war paints. No! Not again! Space! Banana! Candy! Kitty! Icy tumors, St. Patrick's Day, Christmas, Halloween, the carpet in the Shinings Hotel, electric fire, dragons, murka, leopard skin, plaid, pizza, money, cow, cardboard box! Help me! Okay, it's cool. I knew what I was getting into here. Just know this. You can wear anything. You can shoot with anything. You can be anything. To reply to the common hot take that TF2's extended cosmetic library went too far, you know, that it quote-unquote killed the art style, um, no. No, it didn't. It just gave us the power to make it whatever we want. And clearly, people want something weirder sometimes. Saying that it degraded artistically because of more customization options is kind of fucked, okay? Just want to put that out there. True, I don't like all the additions either, but come on. But next is music, and yeah, pretty great too. Really, really weird how such an iconic video game score is barely even in the video game in question. Yes, most are actually featured primarily in the official shorts and in game menus. Reminder that there is no actual background music during gameplay. Very odd. But the work good old Mike Moraski puts into Hale's own holy hymns is the reason they're holy. Utterly dominant in the field of high energy with tracks like the main theme, Mercenary Park, and Manrobics, weaponizing the casual chill factor with more guns Dapper Cadaver and Rocket Jump Waltz and inject the already powerful awe of booming orchestra with ruthless masterpieces like The Calm, Medic, Rise of the Living Bread, and Dreams of Cruelty. Oh, god damn it! So good! Now here's where heads roll. Logan, 
Bro, you've made four countdowns extensively gushing about how TF2 ticks. More than two full hours. You can't possibly say any more. Hum hum, my good chums. Watch me. It takes a special breed of magic to turn something so one note into an epic chorus ready to sing for God. But he himself saw to it that the conductors direct with actual, literal wands. Was that God hates magic, you say? Well, God loves Team Fortress too. So, uh, review your textbooks. The very legacy of Mr. John Cook and Robin Walker went on to become the toy story of modern FPSs. Not exactly being original in the base concept, but pushed forward with passion and muted brilliance almost unheard of in its field, to the point where so many strive to be it. That's not to regurgitate the all FPSs are dull stereotype I once stupidly lobbied so hard for. They're Gaming's equivalent to popcorn flicks. Fun, simple, reliable time killers, highly approachable, and appreciated. I've played good, even great FPSs, but TF2 is the only one I would call truly amazing. I think Mickey from Scream 2 put it best. It's all about execution. Execution indeed, good psychotic sir. Through hyper-intelligent subversion of classic FPS staples and low-key invention of all new ones, every battle waged in the name of man brings a full stack of one-of-a-kind thrills to the genre at large. Even after playing something paying great homage to it, like Overwatch and eventually Overwatch 2, TF2's nuts and bolts are unparalleled in versatility. It is indeed weird and possibly off-putting to those hardwired by typical FPSs to expect a uniform design, making it tough to transition. But if you can adjust, I can promise that you'll never leave. Every raw attribute you'd normally give a standard FPS unit is often extracted into one giant pile and selectively gifted to specific individuals reigning under Sexton. The universal ability to sprint? That goes to Scout. Everyone got a backup grenade to toss? That's you, Demo Man. Take control of a mounted gun for added firepower? I know just the Russian for the job. It's limiting in a certain perspective, yes, by cutting basic actions from a blank, mass-produced slate. But the moment you isolate the mechanic, you can optimize it, or as I see it, finding one in a crowd and truly getting to know them. This dime a dozen normie, you find, is in fact deep. Beautiful. A true character. Someone worth keeping close. That is Team Fortress 2's great secret. Specialization. With every class given their own mechanical monopoly and forced limitations. The grand design clicks in place with a sound you absolutely cannot resist hearing again and again. And again, class counters and damage values lead the ecosystem, but the special physics and dynamics push it to heights your everyday shooter couldn't dream of. Rocket and sticky jumping, air blast, lingering flames, cloaking, backstabs, building construction, all casual song and dance for each of us, but a haunting siren's call to the increasingly rare TF2 virgin. There's so much shit this game innovates in its home turf, and whatever it doesn't is tailored to in another impressive way. Pyro's afterburn and air blast, engineers mechanical map editing, spy supremacy on stealth. You never see stuff like that. You just want to discover things with them, they're so deep and interesting. Whereas more traditional playstyles like Heavy, Sniper, and debatably Scout are gifted glorious personalities and high dependence on game sense, making them a joy to listen to and greatly train your mechanical skills with their massive strengths and punishing weaknesses. Demo and Soldier are endlessly fulfilling in their rewarding burst DPS and physics ravaging mobility. The deific darlings of the OG Source Engine. And man, Medic's anti-combat nature may leave you thirsty for frags, but it challenges your entire psychology on shooters. All nine corralled together by strategically balanced run speeds and health pools. It's pure, refined, time-tested brilliance, and only amplified even 
further with weapon unlocks in the triple digits, strategically designed maps, although not all of them are great, and a wide variety of modes. With a family tree encompassing every taste imaginable and mechanical depth to legitimately last a lifetime, it's not a single damn wonder why nobody ever truly quits TF2. Oh my lord, he's still going. Yeah, he is. See, it's not simply enough for me to frisk the glorious bastard for a quality search to sate my critic boner, no. This fucker's officially a full-on Chad, and I need to hang out with him. Forget the professional portfolio and fashion sense. I need a best buddy. And when your cast's likability could effortlessly match even Nintendo's finest, Man, the S-tier squad of shitheads within are some of the most iconic faces in gaming and internet history. For too many good reasons to even fit into four giant countdowns. The TF team's aim to transform our gun-happy avatars into Saturday morning cartoon idols was tighter than a sentry gun's. Masterful wit, versatile designs, and amazing voice talent guarantees a gang gifted in delighting every age, gender, and nationality bracket on the planet. And on a genuine level, not everybody loves all of them, but everybody likes at least one of them. Loudmouth millennial fuckboy scout, nonsense breeding USA hold soldier, the infinitely moldable pyro, literal black Jesus demo man, mother Russia's pride and joy heavy, fucker Texas ranger, engineer, medicinal magician medic, Aussie of endless awesome sniper, and France's finest foil spy. We know them and love them like our own family because they truly invite it. As you know, I have said four countdowns and eventually two more detailing their mass appeal, so that's a more controlled place to learn up on them. But I will say this, the blend of beautifully detailed gameplay and infectious supplementary character-driven entertainment. It makes an excellent product, a damn experience, leading to my favorite overall element in TF2, the camaraderie. Those moments when you link up with fellow mercs with strong passion for the fight themselves. It's such a trip. Ugh, ugh, they got me good, man. I can't, I can't go on. Oh, food! Fuck yes, brother! Until the end! I got you, buddy. Don't you die on me! We'll get through this as one. As one! No! Pyro! No! We failed, brother. And it was awesome. That. That kind of epic shit happens all the time. It's some of the most fun I can ever get. You feel like you're part of a war. A fun pretend one. Not like Nom. More like, nom, nom, nom. it's, ah, oh, it's magic. But you gotta be serious sometimes, even when cosplaying as a condom. Truly, if you're so comfortable with a game to have it extensively featured on your YouTube channel, surely you can bear some criticisms, right? I mean, yeah, I'm cool with talking about TF2's cons, especially considering they clearly don't hamper my personal probes. First, let's consider the cause of the overwhelming majority of any existing and eventual problems. Team Fortress 2 is barely updated anymore. As of writing, the last update with any substantial impact on game structure was the Blue Moon update of early 2018, two full years ago. Never mind the why, because we know why, and bitching doesn't change anything, because it's royally fucked from a consumer's perspective. No, we need to care about the what. Even with the tight core design, Accidents happen, bugs and exploits develop, and we have to wait for months on end to see most of them squashed. Critical cases like 2019's Crate Depression and the recent Crashbot infestation often get fixed within a week or two, but guys, that's it. Some weapons prove problematic as new strategies are discovered, leaving the community with shitty choices to make. Like banning those weapons from our personal competitions. Assholes griefing with aimbot software can run amok with it being free to play. It's a certain cycle. It's not a great feeling to have to deal with a mess you physically can't clean up. Even with the reality that things are 
fairly under control at the current moment, it's built into the game at this point with how puny the dev team is. And that won't ever change unless core company policy does. Things get static very often for very long because of it. And a lot of stuff is just flat out abandoned because there's so much ground and so little manpower to cover it. Remember the comic? What's that? Man vs. Machine's been the exact same for seven years, and I'm being serious here. It really sucks. Valve, get another partner company to give a fuck for you, just like you did with CSGO. You dominate the PC software market. You have billions. This is bullshit. Also, shit rig. AKA the questionable melee hitboxes. They've always been not literally broken, but they're spotty from time to time, definitely. This gives the more melee oriented classes like Spy and Demo Knight potential problems that they don't need. That and it's just jank. Random crits and random bullet spread are also annoying, but random damage spread used to be a thing too until Gunmetal removed it, so it's entirely possible that these two will be excised just the same one day. That's truly it as far as legit problems go. It's almost entirely from Valve Corporate's atrocious level of sloth. But I'll pick a few nits just for the fuck of it. Halloween restrictions are stupid. Please get rid of them. Some of the coolest looking cosmetics in the game are only visible during Halloween season or when a server is enabled with full moon, which is only so common. Can I please be Magical Pootis Bird, Christian Brutal Jawa, and Pyro Shark McYes Daddy anytime I want? I beg of you. Another thing, why can't war paints be applied to all weapons? You might think that's a bit much, but why slap a limit on what we can customize? Why can't I eat a cardboard banana? Why can't I smell my pimp hand just by looking at it? Why can't I have a pizza dick? Seriously, why can't I has pizza dick? For real though, I may be huge on cosmetics, but for some reason some people aren't. So maybe make a client-side filter that lets us turn hats, skin, and unusual effects off? That would be massively appreciated by many, I'm sure. I also have a ton of weapon balance requests, but I ain't after breakfast. Not my protocol. May it never be unheard. In all but polygons and process power, Team Fortress 2 is the greatest PC game of all time. My opinion, sure. But I can't think of any other that's led us with such heart, such wit, and such invincible loyalty. Artistically upending an entire genre, mass innovating the free-to-play model for the better, and whether in-game or in-video, making collectively trillions of days that much brighter. It's an utter titan. I'll say it so you won't. It's not pitch perfect and it could be even better if given the high priority it more than deserves. But the things it's ever done right, it continues to do so fucking right. With so much to offer, so much still waiting for it, and an entry fee too small for even a penny to see, there's outstanding reason I still can't shut up about it. My team, my friends, my brothers, a job masterfully done, making battles with hats and guns so damn fun. And now, give it up for the high tier patrons. Shade 2800, Panther J, Tubazone 1989, Diamond Ice, Skellington 977, Mathtron 5000, Goldsbro TSG, Thomas Drury, Lucario Smash 246, God Falking Dammit, Alfredo Jones, Love, Sefi 90, Zero Z, Jake Arnstom, Morgan Arvite, Squeegee Luigi, BF Rio, John the Pink, Renaku, Lord of Shadow, Cortamanch 437, Azazel the Undying, Cody Thomas, Peter Shepard, Solitaire Seamus, Christopher, GTY 200, Belkin, Michael Boyd, Steve, Masao, Exeox, put 9 volt in Smash Bros please, Arctic Kaiju, Gaming Griffin, Burn 100B, Patrick Sandlin, Maze Arcana, Jinxiest, Kyle Wee 21, Ray the Snivy, Douglas Jenkins, Blue 9999, Eddie Toxpin, Sonic Sceptile Warrior, Nathaniel Sterling, Dova Shikan, 
Allen, Charles Meeker II, Fencer De Rio, Andrew Weston, Roberto Del Fuego, Smash Mario Pro 2000, Grandmaster Augustus, Lucky 1313 Pikachu Crusher 26, Kenneth Gutierrez, and Spark of Dusk 777. May we meet again!